up there one day, and there was a old uh, wicked Philistine giant by the name of Goliath. It was challenging the nation of Israel. And everyone was afraid of him. David went to, to, to Saul and told him, he said, I'll fight him. Paraphrasing it right here. Saul offered his armor to David. David said, I don't need that. I, I, this, this just don't fit. But I, then David shared his resume with Saul. He said, Saul, there was once a lamb, a bear, that came out to get the sheep. I fought the lamb, I fought the bear, and I slew them. He said, all I need is five stones and a slingshot. Five stones. One was for Goliath, the other four was for his brothers. And David went and challenged Goliath. And Goliath looked at him and he said, oh, am, I, am I a dog that, you, that y'all going to send this child to come and fight against me? So David told him what he did to the lion, to the bear, and he said, you uncircumcised Philistine. I come to you in the name of the Lord. And the lion started laughing. But David was serious. David took, took that stone, put it in his sling. Started swinging it and swinging it and swinging it. Started running towards the giant. All of a sudden, he let he let that stone go out of the sling. And he hit the, the giant in the middle of the eye, forehead, right there. And he came tumbling down. And David took his sword, the giant sword, and cut his head off. Hallelujah. Don't tell me what God can't do. And after this circumstance has happened, then they went back and they started saying, Saul killed his thousand, but David 10,000. And what if God says that Saul, in the midst of it all, had a troubled spirit that came upon him. So then when they started asking about someone to come and play music to soothe Saul, tormenting spirit. And they remembered about David. David knew how to play the harp. He came in the house of Saul and he would play the harp to soothe Saul with that tone in his spirit. One day Saul got a little bit angry, took a spear to Jabla, and tried to kill David. David went out the house. Him and Saul's son, my name was Jonathan, they became good friends. That was a love that was birthed through them. Hallelujah. This give me an illustration of how God how the preparation time was done. How David went through the different process, different process, through the process with different things that he had to go through in order to uh, get to the place to obtain the position of becoming king. So if God has no respect of person, he did it for David, guess what? He'll do the same for you and I and every believer of Christ. Again, the process is a series of actions of steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. You see, God knew that some things needed to happen again in David's life before he he could become king. Likewise, brothers and sisters, there are some things that need to happen in our lives even in 2019, before we can step into what God has for us. Again, in the word of God, trust in God process for our lives. In Proverbs, 5, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. 
in David's case as well, as being a shepherd boy, watching sheep, he could have quickly become bitter in his way to become king. You see, David knew that God was using the process to bring about God's promise for him to become king. Bitterness can cause unbelief in the in the promises of God that was given. Trusting God's process for your life, God's preparation, again, is the key for the manifestation of the promise in our lives. Again, David, Anointed, his appointed was to watch to see. That was his appointed time after he got anointed by the prophet Samuel with all before his brothers and those that was there. Sometimes even us as God's children think that watching is just something we do to pass the time until we can do what we are supposed to do. Always remember this, that preparation must come before the opportunity. God will prepare you for the opportunity that will come your way. Believers of Christ, you may be in a season of waiting. Maybe you have been waiting for a long time. And you're starting to wonder, oh, God, you're starting to wonder if God would, will ever bring about his promises in your life. The fact still remains. Is he, are you trusting the process? Trusting God's process for your life will bring forth the promise. Let your faith be strengthened. Know that God is preparing you today for what he wants to go to do through you in the near future. God is teaching you to trust him, to be bold in your faith. God is growing your character. God is fine-tuning your gifts and calling. Trust God. The process is bringing about the promise. Trusting God's process for your life. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God tonight, today. We serve a God that sits high and look low. We serve a God that is able to do what he has promised to do in our lives. But we must trust the process. Hallelujah. We must trust God's process for our life. Because the process will bring the promise to be manifested in our lives. Well, bless God. God is good and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, precious Father, we thank you for the word that was taught in here tonight, today. We thank you, Lord, because you look over your word to perform. We thank you, Lord, for the process, for God's process being manifested in our lives, which is important, which is essential for us to receive the promises of God. Lord, I thank you right now that the word will not return to you, Lord, I believe that the word of God has fallen on good ground. It will bring forth 30, 60, and 100 fold blessings into people's lives. I thank you for meeting the needs. I thank you for answering the prayers. I thank you for honoring the requests. But most of all, precious Father, I thank you. Because the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I thank you, Father God, <coughs> excuse me, because you're a God that knows best. You're a God 
that is able. Thank you for making us, for molding us, for stripping us, for breaking us, and remaking us into the vessels suitable to be used for you. We are your mouthpiece, your hands and feet. Use us, Lord, the way that you see fit. There may be one or there may be some underneath the, mouth, the sound of my voice that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Well, this is the time for you to get right with God. This is the time because time is not like it once was. This is the time because Jesus said in this word, he's coming back for a church without spots, limits, or wrinkles. He's coming back for prepared people to take them to a prepared place. Yes, the God that we serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's, he is preparing a place for us. It's just simply coming to the, to the place in life where you know that you know that you know that you are a sinner. You know that you need help in your life. You may be towed down from the floor up, but God is willing. He's standing there with open arms asking you to come to him. If you, if you could have been fixed up, you would have done it a long time ago. It's just simply of repenting, making a 180-degree turn in your life. Giving it to him. Letting God know how sorry you are. Being sincere. Having a repentant heart. Asking Jesus to come in your life. Clean you up. Turn you around. Put your foot on solid ground. It's just a matter of confessing and believing. Where God says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, Believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. For with your heart you believe on the righteousness. And with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes, we serve an awesome God, child. We serve a good God. And with that belief and with that confession of faith, you are saved. God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He wants to, he wants to lead you to a Bible-believing church where the word of God is being preached. And with that said, we just hope and pray that was something that we that we said through the word of God today. That will bring encouragement to you. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. For our glory. Amen. 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 We hope you've enjoyed the teachings this evening. We hope you gleaned some information that you can apply to your life and share with others that they can apply to their lives also. If you would like to contact Apostle Tebow or myself with questions, comments, topics you'd like to discuss, please feel free to write us at uh, Busting Loose in Faith Ministries in care of Apostle Dudley Tebow, P.O. Box 92864, Lafayette, Louisiana, 70509. Make note, that's a new address. Busting Loose in Faith Ministries in care of Apostle Dudley Tebow, P.O. Box 92864, Lafayette, Louisiana, 70509. Please join us every Tuesday and every Friday evening at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for another teaching. We'd love to, for you to join us, and we'd love for you to have your friends and family join us also. So share the number. Share the uh, website where they so that they can go and pull up the old tapes, the old messages, and listen to them. There may be something in that for them, too. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. We hope to hear and be with you again on Friday at 6 p.m. God bless. Thank you.